Welcome back to Station Ears, and it's time for a quick public service announcement. I did put it in a comment in the last video, I believe, but in case you're watching this and you didn't read the comments in the last video, remember when I made this mixing device which then output clean air to us <laughs> in the form of canisters? Well, there is one or a couple of things you need to do um, before actually replacing your air tank with the new one. First of all, press 2 twice, scroll to pressure up, and then make sure your internal pressure is um, atmospheric pressure, i.e. 100-ish kPa. You can see at the top right of the screen. The other thing you need to do is also in the suit, go and fit a nitrogen filter. <laughs> what was happening was, I took the air canister, swapped it over, I had the suit pressure correct, and um, yeah, I was dying, and I couldn't figure out why I was saying oxygen low. So uh, what I think is happening is you're getting essentially nitrogen build up around your helmet and you're not getting enough oxygen so you choke and fall over and black out so yeah please do fit the nitrogen filter i'm not sure if the suit pressure is too much of an issue but i'm just inflating it to uh, atmospheric pressure just to make sure that's just a quick public service announcement from the greatest the school of not dying um this episode we're probably going to go on and i'm going to improve a few things first of all I want to get rid of this computer, probably. Let's just pop you in there and activate you. Uh, we've got three, and nah, it's nearly the end of the day. So, um, oh. Helps if the iron goes into there. Um, yes, so what I wanted to do was just switch to my uh, atmospheric analyzer. Yeah, let's just get rid of you for a second. Um, drop you. And then I do wish these would have labels in the inventory, but if they don't, that's okay. It's not that one. Uh, network analyzer, that's the one I want. So let's change, put this in place, and drop you, <clears throat> turn you on. Okay, let's take a look at the network. All right. So I haven't shown this before, but... Um, Here's just basically an idea of what uh, power we're actually using. So in case you're having power issues, you can use the network analyzer to figure that out. In this case, we're on the input side of the battery. So you can see we have four solar arrays, the daylight sensors. Uh, the actual amount of power we're using, well, we're creating is um, 1.6 kilowatts, and the amount we required is one megawatt. Okay, so I guess that's what, I guess that's the uh, either the capacity of this cable or that battery. Either way, so on this side, uh, let's go here. See, we can only see the transformer and the air power power control, and this this uh, the transformer is set to 500 watts. So you can see it's only 480 watt required. And on this side, well, everything is actually here. So <laughs> uh, the actual amount of power is 480 watts. The potential we could use up is 289 kilowatts. So, yes, uh, unfortunately, however, this cable um, only takes five. So, uh, let's not actually uh, try and put 289 kilowatts through this cable, shall we? However, uh, let's just take a look actually. Uh, does it tell me what this computer alone uses? Um, let's see, it's not. Oh, yeah, I can scroll. That's fine. Computer on powered closed. No, it doesn't. That's slightly annoying. I'd like to see exactly how much this computer uses, and there's no real way, it seems, of me doing that with this, at least not without a separate display. Okay, fine. What I wanted to actually see is how much power that computer is using, because we're probably going to go over to logic controllers rather than the computer screen. This approach is good to start with, and it's certainly easier than figuring out logic controllers. However, it, um, it strikes me as being sort of inefficient longer term. Longer term, we want something sort of embedded that will just manage these solar panels. Now, the issue with solar panels, and let me just turn on my, oops, turn on this so you can see. Um, there's two variants of them now. This base has been added uh, since the first couple of episodes. It used to have data and power into one place. However, the new version that you can build has two, one in the front, one in the back. So I think what I'm probably going to do is create that and then uh, replace these all with the new versions. That will give me a chance to use a data cable at the back and a power cable at the front. So the power cable can go along this way and the data cable can go along that way. It's fine for now. So let's go ahead and uh, figure that one out.
Okay, so I've gone and made a bunch of components that are uh, electro print machine, which is right there. Come over here, and now you'll see one of the solar panels is out of order, or at least out of position. That's because this is the other type. Instead of having both data and power in the same place, we can scroll wheel when we select solar panels now and have power on one side and data on the other, which is exactly what we want, just to simplify things. So these are going to keep on tilting at 10 degree, um, well, 10% intervals, I should say. It's 10% rotations. Uh, that shouldn't be the case once we get this going. So, first of all, we run a cable all the way down to all the data ports. There's no data ports in these because I've not reconstructed them because I'd rather like some power while I'm setting this up, or at least for as long as possible. So do make sure you have supplies. And speaking of supplies, I did switch back to pure oxygen just because I was having problems getting enough nitrogen. I didn't have enough ice around. So my nitrogen uh, is, you know, 1500 kPa. My oxygen, yeah, that's 7k. Hydrogen is also 6k. Uh, this is actual air and I have it only at 2k so I'll switch that back to air uh, sorry oxygen there seems to be no oxygen toxicity so there's no downside at the moment to doing that uh, maybe that'll happen in the future but we do have that mixing uh, uh, set up uh, if you want to do use air so let's get carry on with this build uh, we need so a few things so I built some logic memories some logic IOs and uh, one processor I think we're going to need at least one processor. Yeah, it should be. So let's start with the Logic I.O. Okay, let's grab you. And if we right click, we have a choice of a few things. A reader, so a reading from memory. A batch writer, which we're going to use in a logic writer. We want the batch writer, and I'm going to set it up this way. You'll see the powers to the right, but we're going to disconnect this cable and move this once we get everything set up. So let's pop you in place and put you back down. So now we get some options, and this is where we use the screwdriver for the first time, and we get to choose what we want as the output. So if we change this to say solar panels, and we'll change the batch writer to say we want to change the vertical, okay? And then we have to provide an input of some kind. Now the input we're going to have to get from two different sources. We're going to have to get a memory uh, so a source, we want a constant uh, a number basically. So let's just grab the memory, you'll see what I mean. So if I pop this down and build it, and pop these down, you'll see I can construct memory. And um, well, what I can actually do with this, if I click, I can change the value of this. It's just a number up and uh, back down in, in lots of 10. And if I hold down left alt, I can go up in value of like 1. <laughs> the problem is, we don't want 10 or 1. I actually want um, 180 degrees divided by, you know, maybe 100, which is 1.8. I can't, I can't set 1.8. So uh, you can create a whole bunch of other things to say, take an 18 memory and take a 10 memory and then divide the two and output into a logic. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's let's do this a little bit simpler. Um, first of all, we want the logic processor. So I'm going to take two inputs here and output one. So let's just bring you here. I may run out of room actually on this. I may have to build it one above. Uh, I need power and I'm going to require two inputs and one output. So I almost want it there, which is fine if I build another block. I guess, and I'm going to take a daylight sensor from the top and then some kind of logic memory from the bottom. Let's see if that actually works. So let's pop you down. Let me turn on the helmet because it's difficult to read the um, the you know the values otherwise. We're gonna have to move that pretty soon. So here is uh, the power. So we want, I guess, the daylight sensor moving up there. Am I comfortable with disabling it? Why not? Let's just, uh, we can also re-enable it, can't we, if we need to? And I'm going to want to make, now I've disconnected the power, I'm probably going to want to make a just a couple of iron frames. Unless I've got some iron frames around. Uh, I usually do have one. Oh, oh hi. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I left that there, but just in case, I'd like to make sure I have an extra. And do I have an iron sheet anywhere? Probably in the other locker. And let's just get the, uh, the welder out, I guess. Do we have any iron sheets? Glass sheets? No. I really should have iron... Ah, iron sheets. Okay. 
And let's put you back in here. And then we just want to weld this up into a surface we can build on. And let's grab you. Construct. There we go. And let's actually weld it up both ways, just so it's easier to see. And pop your iron sheets in here for now. All right, where was I? Ah, yeah, math. <laughs> lots and lots of math. So we're going to have to put, provide two inputs. A daylight sensor, so let's, let's put that in the top, maybe. And we can rotate that around. And we can put in that. So that's one of our inputs. And the other input is going to have to be... Well, let me just deconstruct that first, because we're going to have to take you out. Uh, not that one. There we go. Let's remove this cable. And I probably even want to remove this cable. And just set that up to a corner. There we go. And pop that down. We don't need that anymore. Hopefully. <laughs> If this all goes to plan. So we're going to take a daylight sensor, which is going to be um, up there. It's going to give us the angle. And we're going to divide that by 1.8. And that will get us uh, an output in 0 to 100, I think. Yeah. Let's give that a go. So we want to set the memory up. So let's grab some memory. And this doesn't need power, which I'm very thankful for. Let's put you there. And again, let's just grab some cable coil. Let's input U. And then output on this side is going to be a corner. And a straight. So this needs, is this going to need power on one side? It probably is. Yeah, I'm going to have to move that. Okay. Um, yeah, I am going to have to move it. That's a shame. That was looking really neat as well. Uh, let's just put you, say, it doesn't really matter that we have these on the same network, so let's put you over there and grab you again. There we go. Actually, we don't want a corner. Let me just change you back. Okay, we want to connect. Uh, both of these, so let's take you out. So we want junctions. Like that. And we're also going to want a junction here. Because we're going to go down and then we're going to get power from... Well, it doesn't actually matter. We can get it power from the other side of our battery. That's where we want it from. And then we want a junction here. I think I'll just put a junction. I can do a corner there, but it, it doesn't matter. We're going to get that sorted. Okay, so is that now hooked up? We just want power. And she's going to have to come that way. So let's just make a corner. And then the rest should be mostly straights. We definitely want to go on the other side of the APC and don't want to get anything on the wrong side. So let's come all the way this way. Oops. I hope I didn't build something there. I probably did. Okay, and then we can just cut this here. Change to a junction. And change to a corner. Okay, so we should have power and data connectivity to all of these now. We've got the memory accessible, we've got the batch writer accessible. Uh, this has all of its inputs. High um, pressure. High pressure? Really? It's the same pressure showing up? Okay. <laughs> Let me just take a save, just in case. Uh, Grey 13. Yes, I have this many saves, just in case. Death is death in this game. <laughs> right, so now we can get to setup. Screwdriver. So input one, no other readable devices on the network. That may need power, actually. Yeah. Okay. Can I get power to you without too much more work? Um, hopefully. Let's just change over. Change you to a junction, maybe. 
and then corner. I'm going to need one more cable, so I'm going to need my electro print. Printed 40 odd cables, and it's still not enough. Just two should do fine. Yeah, let's grab you. Maybe you need power, maybe you don't, but at least we can have this sorted just in case. And a junction. All right. So now what do we do? Let's just pop you away. And you away. Grab our screwdriver. So the input, uh, the input's going to be the logic math, uh, I think. Let's just take a look. Yep, logic math. Output is vertical, solar panel. Memory, there's, it's zero at the moment. So let's just go over here. I think I have a spare computer I've not done anything with. And if I flip you to on, I can create a new state. Conditions, let's just say if the computer is on. Okay. And then the actions, just so it triggers, uh, we want to choose the logic, if it's in here, let's just scroll wheel. Logic memory. Setting zero, we can enter a new value of 1.8. I previously set that up, so press go and turn off. Hopefully that remembers its state. We'll see very shortly. Uh, 1.8, good. So now we can take uh, our inputs. So from the batch writer, no, we want the logic memory and we want the solar angle on this side. So we're going to say, you know, another batch writer I need. The daylight sensor. Uh, can I just pull directly from you or do I need an IO? It's possible I need an IO or some way to read you. Let's just grab this, deconstruct you for a second, and shift you further up. And then we have a reader somewhere. There we go, logic IO. Not a batch writer, a logic writer, a logic reader. And we can flip this around just to say I want to power from the right because <laughs> the output is on the bottom here. So we want the output there. So uh, let me just say, can I set you to say no selected device? Oh, I need a device connection. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to need more cable. <laughs> One second, let me just cable more things in. All right, more cabling done. Let's go to here. We can tell it any device. So we're just going to change this. And I want the make sure I have the daylight sensor. So hopefully it is actually an input that we can select. Um, <laughs> although I have a lot to go through, I guess I could disconnect this from the rest of the network to get this sorted. Uh, and I probably yeah, there we go. So daylight sensor. Fine. So logic reader, we want the solar angle. All right, and logic reader on. So now I can select the logic reader. I can select, I want to subtract, uh, sorry, divide. Yeah, divide one by two, I assume. And then logic memory is the other side. So if I turn you on, and that should be two of them gone. And then the output, it'd be nice if it told me state. So here it is, it's going to be coming down. Are you actually tilting? Uh, oh, this isn't on yet, so... this uh, Is the sun up? No, the sun isn't up, but it is coming down to zero. So that's exactly what we want. So it's definitely pulling something from the daylight sensor. All that doesn't give me a kind of indication on the GUI. And let's turn on the batch writer. So we can change that from the uh, logic math. And that should be outputting state. Which is actually tilting the... <laughs> it's tilting the solar panel. Of course, it might be the opposite way, uh, but we'll have to, I'll have to do some debugging of that in a minute. But the basic is all sorted out there. Uh, so it is actually writing to this panel and it is actually rotating it. It's just not following the actual sun yet. <laughs> but that's a relatively minor problem once I have the rest sorted. So let me just go and debug this just so that we've got everything right. 
In fact, the logic was working perfectly fine. I just had the solar panel rotated the wrong way. Because when I put this down, just the way the sun is and the way I built this, this data port is at the back in my setup. So I, if you look at the very base here, uh, you can choose, there we go, rotate left and right. I had to rotate mine, I had it minus 90. It starts off at zero, but that means vertical is this way. I don't want it to go that way. Not on the case on these, just on this one, just with the way this is built. So I ride it rotated minus 90, change it to plus 90 instead, and now it is actually tracking the sun, or at least it should be. Um, what are you set to at the moment? 9%. Okay, so now if I build, obviously we can change the content if we want to slow it down a little bit, but that looks pretty good, and it is a continual now rotation. It's not any kind of, um, you know, 10 degree increments. So let me just tilt those up for a second, uh, tilt those down even. Okay, and just so we get some power back into our batteries. And now I'm going to go and uh, essentially deconstruct these and then reconstruct them as... Uh, let's just... Uh, which tool is it? Is it the crowbar? Yes, it is. So just to show you this. Uh, that is glass sheets, so I can just drop those down. Put this back. Put this back even. And now we can deconstruct the solars. And then we can reconstruct them, and now you get two options. This is the, the one we actually want. The power, however, needs to be on the front. And like that. Okay, and then we need to just change over. Grab the cutters. Need less heavy cable now, which is all good. That's going to cut all the power off for me, but just don't worry. It won't be very long. And let's just change you to straight. Straight and straight. And then we just need to disconnect this one and this one and this one. Change those junctions. One and two and three. Save some cable. And then we can just pick up this, reconstruct the solar panels. Uh, put you away now, and then we can just rotate with the wrench. So rotate 90 degrees. 90. 90 and 90. I already set them to junctions at the back, so that already is set up. And you'll see they're already tracking the sun. No more need for this computer. Power uh, low. Power low. Is that in my suit? It is in my suit. <laughs> that wasn't for me turning off the computer, honestly. Power critical. Yes. And let me just turn off the uh, light. That's probably what's consuming all the power. So, yeah, we've now got no computer and everything is still working. We've got this setup, which fits on two blocks. You might be able to get it inside a block, maybe. Um, that's possible to hide it. And then just have the daylight sensor. That may even work inside a block as well. So we could just hide it inside these two blocks, I guess, with uh, deconstructing them and then resetting everything up. But I'll just leave mine there for kind of a suitable example. And this retains its number of 1.8. And now, as you can see, we're getting 475 watts. 476, 477. It should track pretty well. I don't think it's going to get perfectly... Um, 500 it seems to be lagging slightly so you can just adjust this constant very slightly using any of the computers now we can reclaim this one and, and we don't need that one i don't think so we can get that going okay that's this episode done this will automatically adapt to however many solar panels i put down now all i have to do is connect the back to that cable and the front to this cable rotate it 90 degrees and away it'll go obviously you may have to rotate things differently in your world but it's just the bottom with a wrench so there's no real problem with that this program will be exactly the same and i've not got the uh the light on there this program will be exactly the same and uh, hopefully you enjoy it so feel free to give it a thumbs up if you haven't or subscribe if you haven't share or leave comments if you have any way of making that more compact please do let me know um i don't think there is but uh seems pretty good to me 
And I guess next, what are we going to do next? Well, I'm going to need to go mining to get more stuff. We did use gold in this, these these logic processors and uh, the, the various IOs and, you know, the logic chips, the memory chips. Uh, they all consume gold, so I went and got a little bit, but I'm going to be running short on gold and copper. And I think I need a little bit of silver as well for something, but uh, otherwise that's fine. So next episode, uh, we're going to carry on, probably head into the, maybe pressurize the downstairs. I'm certainly probably going to, oh, certainly probably, that's that's a bad way of describing. I'm probably going to put this portable tank on the outside, add another filtration unit up here, and then uh, I will be able to filter out um, water and uh, probably a last tank for the contaminants really and then we have everything going hope you enjoyed it see you next time